our speakers today. Um, we have got Dr. Sandra Celestine and Mrs. Wilma uh, Charles. I'm just going to spotlight Sandra just now. And both of them are going to be sharing their screens and their presentation on horticultural healing at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. Now, first of all, Dr. Sandra Celestine received her PhD from New York University. Her clinical training as a child and adolescent therapist has supported her professional interest in working with at-risk youth. As a former lecturer in the Faculty of Social Sciences, and current portfolio as a counsellor and coordinator for the health and wellness programme at the University of the West Indies in the Health Services Unit, Dr Celestine works collaboratively with students, faculty, staff and community organisations to support the growth and development of students and the wider campus community. The physical and emotional well-being of the campus community and the community at large through health promotion and education is what Dr. Celestine is most passionate about. I'm just going to let spotlight Wilma now for everyone to see. Um, Mrs. Wilma Charles graduated from the Trinidad and Tobago Catholic Women's Teachers Training College in 1972. She later attained certification as a physical education teacher and taught that subject at secondary schools in Trinidad, where she initiated many sports competitions. A keen sportswoman, Wilma played netball and field hockey in National League and tennis at club level. She retired from the teaching service in 1996. Wilma is the founding president of the Eastern Horticultural Club and co-founder of the Therapeutic Healing Garden at the University of the West Indies. Her interest in horticulture and floral, floral, oh, floral arranging led to her becoming a member of the Floral Arranging Group of the Horticultural Society of Trinidad and Tobago and a member of the executive of that society. Now, she has a huge number of hobbies, and I'm sure she'll be brilliant at every single one of them. International travel, sports, gardening, floral arranging, cooking, reading, crossword puzzles, word games, handicraft, and she still finds time for some media contributions on horticultural issues. Wilma possesses a keen sense of humour, which she attributes to her love of um, nature. So I'm now going to re-spotlight Sandra and invite yourself, Sandra, to share your screen and start your presentation. Thanks so much. Thank you. Can you see your share screen button? Here we go, excellent. <clears throat> Wonderful. Okay, I wanna say greetings to my international colleagues. I am pleased to be a part of this international seminar series as a representative of the University of the West Indies Health Services Unit. Our presentation will focus on horticultural healing at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus in Trinidad and Tobago. Comes again, centers. Oh. <clears throat> okay. yeah. This is an outline of how we, my colleague Mrs. Wilma Charles and I, propose to proceed. This presentation begins with an introduction, then I will give some background about the University of the West Indies. Then I will share some information and highlights about the health services unit. And also we'll um, just talk about some of the key elements in growing a, a, the, the HSU Healing Garden. And then Mrs. Charles and I will share some concluding remarks. Let's begin the conversation. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island nation with a population of approximately 1.4 million. 
Trinidad and Tobago is situated seven miles off the northeast coast of Venezuela. Whereas Trinidad covers an area of 1,841 1, square miles, Tobago is about 120 square miles with some of the world's most beautiful beaches. The UWI is a regional university with four campuses located in Moda, Jamaica, St. Augustine, Trinidad and Tobago, Cave Hill, Barbados, the Five Island Campus located in Antigua and Barbuda. In addition, the university operates an open campus with programs in each of the 17 island states. The University of the West Indies in St. Augustine offers undergraduate and postgraduate degree options in food and agriculture, engineering, medical sciences, humanities and education, as well as science and technology. In 1960, the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture in St. Augustine became the second campus of the University College of the West Indies, an external college of London University. Then in 1962, the University College of the West Indies became a university in its own right, the University of the West Indies. Of special mention is the building featured on this slide, which is one of the oldest buildings on campus. This is the old administration building of the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture. This is one of many historical buildings on campus. This slide highlights the evolution of the UWI from its inception in 1948 with one campus in Mona, Jamaica to now one university with five campuses with a regional presence in over 17 countries. The Health Services Unit at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus is committed to the provision of professional, student-centered health and wellness services across the campus. The photo in the upper right-hand corner is the staff of the HSU. There were staff about 15, 16 persons full-time, as well as about maybe four part-timers. The health services unit is an ambulatory health facility, which provides a range of primary care services. We do consultations, screenings, family planning services, specialty clinics, such as dermatology, vision care, dental care, cancer screening, and recently started an STI clinic. Our introduction of telehealth services were helpful during the COVID-19 pandemic. We were able to continue to provide services to students virtually. Our pharmacy, serves, our pharmacy service facilitates emergency prescriptions as well as requests for lab testing. This is for students as well as staff. We offer workshops for students on managing their health and wellness and also workshops for staff. We provide nutrition and diabetic support and recently started a weight management clinic for students. Our rationale for developing a healing garden was based on the fact that we, based on the fact we understand that university life can be challenging because so many of our students are juggling academic demands and personal lifestyle management. We initiated a student health and wellness program to complement the range of medical and mental health services available to students as well. At the HSU, we noted an increase in unhealthy behaviors such as risky sexual behaviors, alcohol abuse, smoking, poor eating habits, diverse mental health issues, and poor coping strategies among the student population. Also, there was a need to provide a therapeutic environment for staff and students. The introduction of a, of a healing garden 
was used to promote and reinforce overall wellness for students and staff. So we considered the healing garden as a strategic intervention to connect with the campus community. Let's take a look at the project, the project objectives of the healing garden. First, to create a place of refuge for students to enjoy the restorative power of nature. To involve student groups in the planting phase of the garden and its maintenance. Thirdly, to promote the healing properties of nature and integration of holistic health practices to support a student's well being. Also, to promote integration of the therapeutic healing garden as a curriculum element within the Department of Food Production of the St. Augustine campus. Now I want you to take a look at this photo because this is where we started. This is the health services unit before the intervention. Our HSU green space was overgrown with weeds and more weeds. So as you can see, we needed help ASAP. We reached out to the Eastern Horticultural Club for assistance and guidance with design and development. We needed to know how to go about creating a healing garden. <laughs> what type of healing garden, given the needs of our campus population? We needed assistance with sourcing donations of plants. We needed to identify potential stakeholders. We also needed assistance with creating a water feature element and with maintenance support for the garden. This is where my colleague, Mrs. Wilma Charles from the Eastern Horticulture, Eastern Horticultural Club will take you through the process of collaboration and support they provided to us at HSU. This is Charles. Thank you, Sandra. I will begin now with a brief history of the Eastern Horticultural Club, taking you through from the beginning, right through to the journey of where we are today. The Eastern Horticultural Club was formed in 2010 through the efforts of nine women and one man. At that time, there was only one horticultural club in Trinidad and Tobago. Horticultural Society of Trinidad and Tobago, also called HSTT. It was located in the capital city of Port of Spain. The 10 of us believed then that there was a need to have a club located in the Eastern part of our country because of the population shift to that area and the increasing traffic difficulty to attend the HSTT meetings in Port of Spain. Thus was the Eastern Horticultural Club born. At first, our meetings were held at my home and the secretary's home in St. Augustine. It was a struggle to increase the membership in those early days, but we persevered and decided to participate in a local festival named the Mango Festival featuring all things made from the mango fruit. After exhibiting there, our membership increased so dramatically that we decided to host a flower show. This first show was held at the Sozata Steel Orchestra Facility, or Panyard as we call it. This modest facility is also located in St. Augustine. We found a panyard to be the ideal location to begin our journey into the horticultural world because of the similarity of the struggle of the steel pan, which was invented in Trinidad and Tobago, to be recognized as a unique world-class instrument and the struggle of the Eastern Horticultural Club to become a horticultural club of merit. After that historic opening in 2010, our club grew to such proportions that the present membership is over 100. We also formed a sister club relationship with the El Grove Garden Club of California, USA, as their ideals were similar to ours. And I might add that one of their community projects is a rose garden called the Lichtenberger 
rose garden, whose and in that garden, fragrant blooms provide therapy to all the visitors, just like our healing garden does to the students and visitors on campus. We were happy to welcome some of the Algrove Garden Club members when they visited us for our plant show in 2016. We have successfully organized a flower show every year since 2010 with an average attendance in excess of 1,000 persons. Our proceeds go to charitable causes. Our displays are local horticultural and agricultural fora, feature material from our members' gardens, and upcycled matter. Sandra, would you like to show one of the slides? Yeah. Of our flower show. And here in this slide, you can see one of our members in the green polo shirt, which is our club's polo shirt. And this was at one of the sales we had at um, a mall in the area, in the St. Augustine area. So that's Jenny, one of our members with her plants and seal. And Sandra, if you can go to the next slide, please. And here we, you can see some of our participants and some of our members at one of our flower shows. In the right corner, I want you to pay particular attention to this gentleman with the purple shirt, the lilac shirt with the pots, because I'm going to be speaking about his contribution in a short while. So we usually would have our flower shows at secondary schools because they had the grounds as well as the um, facility to encourage large shows. So our shows have, look, have always been at, apart from the panyard, and once at a mall, we have always had it at secondary schools. Next slide, Sandra, please. Okay, so the other notable achievements of the club were in creating a kitchen garden for a young woman who was afflicted with the AIDS virus. Beautification of the garden in two schools and also being invited to participate in the Beijing Expo 2019. So those are some of our notable achievements. And that, um, that creating of a kitchen garden for the young woman, she, she has since passed on. And, um, but we continue to assess people who are in need. With respect to the Beijing Expo 2019, one of our members, Joan Hampton, she attended this ex expo and participated. Our aim has always been to be a service organization that promoted an awareness and love for plants and gardening while restoring, improving, and protecting the quality of the environment. So when Dr. Celestine approached the club for assistance to start the healing garden, we knew that we had to help in this way because I, together with one of our male members, Herman Udenberg, now deceased, and who I call my man Friday, he was a very experienced horticulturist and a stalwart to me and the club. So we met with Dr. Celestine and the UV department faculty officials and assured them of our club support to create and maintain the healing garden. One rainy Saturday morning in 2016, our members responded to my appeal for volunteers and turned up at the health services unit on the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies bringing their energy and goodwill, as well as plants of all types, medicinal, fragrant, sensory, and colorful. Sandro, could you move on to the next slide, please? So we can see some of these plants. I just wanted folks to be aware of this is the, what the initial yes. cleanup this was, this was involved. They, yes, this so was we're talking removal of weeds and more weeds mm -hmm. that took quite a bit of time. Yes. So here again, you see some of our members doing the cleaning up. And here you see some of the medicinal plants, aloe. Um, sensory plants, colorful plants. Any more in this group? Are there any more in this group, Sandra? No. OK. No, I'll take a look okay. at this. Next okay. slide. OK. So we planted aloe. Wonder of the World, also known as Miracle Leaf, 
and life plant for its amazing healing properties. We planted zinnias, ginger lilies, roses, and croton to name a few. Thus began the transformation of the green area that existed then to the healing garden of today. So here we see some gingers, some this one that looks that has a lot of pods, that is a powder puff plant. Any more slides? Okay. Yes. So that we worked to transform the green area that existed then to the healing garden of today. One member contributed flower pots from his factory. That's a gentleman I showed, spoke about earlier. And two other members designed the first water feature picture the hair. And this water feature was so charming. It was created from discarded vats used to store our world famous vat angus pure rum. So here you can see, this is Estime and, um, Estime and, um, I can't remember the name right now, but they worked together on this first water feature. And of course, most of you would have heard about our Angostura rum. In the intervening years, our club has been able to pursue our original objective, which is to gather new members and use the gifts of experience to hone our skills. Some of our members have even contributed, have even become entrepreneurs. Now in this slide, you will see the new water feature, which was a donation from um, another person in, not in the club, but in the area. And on the right, is this is a most gorgeous water feature with koi fish in it. You can't see the koi fish at the moment, but this was donated by um, a member of the community. And on the right, you will see a bird feeder, which was created from bricks and donated by Mike Manfred, as I call him, Herman Udenberg. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, Sandra. And here you see what the garden looks like today. Here you have Antigua Heat, Bougain Villa, and um, Eucalyptus plant, a glorious show of color. Next slide, please, Sandra. This is uh, this poster was created by the Student Guild to promote the Healing Garden for students to know that there is a place on campus to seek refuge whenever they are feeling overwhelmed or stress, which indicated the, which it does indicate the level of student participation in, and involvement that we've had with this project because the students were promoting the garden. And, and that for us was just a really positive endorsement of what the, what the garden had to offer. The, the student guild promoted the garden on their Facebook page especially around examinations so that students can be aware that if they need to decompress, they can always seek refuge at the healing garden. So this poster was developed by the Student Guild. What you see here, here we have students making use of the healing garden space. Some students Will, will stretch out on the benches and you will just see them relaxing in the space and really, I wanna say connecting with nature and using the space as intended. So there's a connection to the space uh, for the students on campus. In terms of the benefits of the healing garden, Anecdotal evidence from students visiting the healing garden at the HSU across disciplines yielded these remarks. I never knew all these plants before. I found the garden to be organized and well laid out. This is from a student uh, from the engineering faculty. I love the pond because the, the new water feature has a pond and a lot of students enjoy just visiting the pond, which is great. It means accessing the space 
and accessing um, hopefully the space in a way that they make a positive connection between the space and the services that we provide at the health services unit. One student commented that it's, it's a good place to relax. I stretch out on the bench before going to the library or lecture. The garden is described by another student, a medical science student, medical sciences student as a joyful garden. It feels good to walk around, to have lunch, to chill out with friends at the garden. In terms of growing the HSU Healing Garden, some of the most important aspects of the Healing Garden project includes our vision of a healing garden with sensory elements. So we specifically had sensory elements as well as an assortment of herbs, of medicinal plants, ornamental flowers. I mean, it was just, uh, again, based on our campus needs and the student population. Recognition of the importance of the health and wellness needs of the student population. Horticultural expertise of the leadership of the Eastern Horticultural Club. Partnership with community organizations such as the Eastern Horticultural Club, as well as sponsors that have donated stakeholders and that have donated garden elements because all aspects, all of the elements in the garden were donated. Engagement and participation of the students and their representatives in creating the healing garden, as well as program promotion. Involvement of the HSU team in the development and implementation of the healing garden project. We had staff members that came out on a Saturday to help with maintenance of the garden that donated plants for the garden. And again, promoted the garden to the student population. So students that would come into the clinic, we would make sure and point out if they'd had a chance to spend some time in the healing garden and the purpose of the garden. Supporting encouragement from campus management. As Wilma pointed out, we had to initially sit down with campus management and explain what is the purpose of a healing garden and how it can be used to connect with students where they are and also to support our health and wellness programs and connect with students. Support from the corporate sector stakeholders, the donations that we receive for the garden in terms of all of the garden elements, the picnic bench, the benches, um, garden supplies have all been, again, involvement of corporate stakeholders. Embracing the philosophy of the therapeutic value of a relationship with nature through horticulture. Has, that's a key success factor, one of the key success factors. Now I'll ask my colleague, Wilma, to share her concluding remarks. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Thank you, Sandra. I would just like to say that it is the intention of the Eastern Horticultural Club to continue to support the efforts of Dr. Sandra Celestian, that's you, Sandra, at the UWI, in fulfillment of one of our original objectives, that of promoting healing and wellness to everyone. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, everyone. First, a vote of thanks to Mrs. Wilma Charles, who mobilized her organization, the Eastern Horticultural Club, to provide consultancy guidance and hands-on support. You're very welcome. What are the next steps? We are planning a formal evaluation of the project. However, however we are confident the project will continue, the program will continue, will be continued, and we will work to increase student involvement and volunteers to maintain the garden. Also to follow up the curriculum development in the food production department and all, relative, and all relevant departments, such as social work, education and humanities, psychology and medical sciences. So 
I want to thank you again for your invitation to be a part of this seminar series. And we look forward to your comments and your questions and feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you. Your presentation was fabulous. Um, thank you both so very much. From the very beginning, I was taken by your story as I'm so used to learning of projects that have evolved, but your project was an intentional strategic intervention. So I was really taken by that and how it all unfolded. So I'm sure your presentation will have sparked lots of thinking, comments and questions. So I'm going to hand over to Jenny now um, to manage the Q&A session. Jenny, thank you. Thanks very much, Joan. Um, I wonder, that's lovely, if you'd stop um, sharing and that's fantastic, we'll be able to see you both. Um, I just um, to say if anybody wants to put themselves to a speaker view, that probably gives you the best um, audio and visual um, interaction with us at the moment. So um, lovely, we have a question here from Fiona and I'm going to read it out in its entirety. Um, it's quite long, and but it's um, a very interesting one. Um, and it's about the interaction between the um, health uh, this is you now. clinic. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, so that um, the impetus from the garden came from inside the campus health centre um, requesting help in horticulture to create a therapeutic service. And more commonly in the UK, we find that it's, um, it's gardeners trying to convince the health professionals <laughs> about <laughs> the benefits of gardening. We find it's the other way around. So, um, but the Eastern Horticultural Club seems to attract these requests. So um, what do you think the reason is for that? <laughs> well, I, I think Mrs. Charles Wilma can speak to that because I think the Eastern Horticultural Club is very well known in the community and their service to the community is also very well known in terms of being available, sharing their expertise and that was certainly one of the reasons that we connected and we reached out, the, the HSU reached out to the Eastern Horticultural Club for assistance. We had to go to the experts and they are considered the experts in the community. So I think the reputation of the Eastern Horticultural Club is really, it speaks to the membership, it speaks to their involvement in the community and it speaks also to their availability so they are an access point that's, that, that has been so responsive. We reached out to the Eastern Horticultural Club and they immediately responded and they wanted to know how could, how could the membership be of assistance. So I think for us starting at ground zero and we were clueless in terms of how to get this garden launched, how to go about this. The Eastern Horticultural Club stepped in and provided us with supportive guidance <laughs> helped us to identify the type of garden that would be most appropriate given the needs that we've identified. Um, so definitely it was a collaboration, but I think for the collaboration to happen, we had to know where to go. So, and it, we knew that the Eastern Horticultural Club and its membership was the place to go. <laughs> That's great. And uh, maybe can, can I ask the question, what made you decide to have a garden? From the you know from the health perspective side, what sparked that idea initially? Do you know? initially on two levels? One, we were trying to find a way to promote health and wellness across the campus because we had recently initiated a health and wellness program as part of uh, as an expansion of services out of the medical clinic. Yeah. We were trying to find a way to really address health and wellness um, in a user-friendly way. And based on my background, uh, working at a New York hospital that had a healing garden and a, a healing garden was used by clinicians to work with patients that had life-threatening illnesses, I felt why not incorporate that aspect here at HSU? 
and it would be a way to promote health and wellness. It would be a way for us to connect with students. It would be a way to introduce the healing properties of nature. And we felt it was a win-win along those lines. So yes, I understand the question as to the motivation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Fiona, does that fully answer your question or do you have anything else you'd like to add? I was going to add something, but Sandra just covered her, you know, because someone in the in the health center had to had to have identified gardening as yeah. being good. So uh -huh. she she covered that side of it. Thank you. Yeah. And I think you were at the hospital where we had a speaker from the New York hospital last in last year's seminar. Wonderful. So that, <laughs> it all connects up. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Now, um, here's a question about um, some uh, research. Uh, the, uh, aspects. It says, have you done any actual neurological studies pointing to the lowering of stress or better exam performance as a result of using the garden? Um, as it would seem that those medical and psychological faculties might be interested in, you know, this kind of data. Totally agree. Uh, it's a work in progress. That in terms of the data collection and, and, right, and moving beyond just the anecdotal evidence, but actually to have an instrument that would allow us to um, collect data to show the benefits for the student population at UWI. So yes, that is definitely part of the next steps forward. So yes. Thank, thank you. That uh, question was from uh, Vicky. Thank you, Vicky. Um, if anyone would like to ask a question at the moment and um, please put up your hand you can use the reactions buttons or pop it into the chat and um, I'll be able to capture it there so um so Joan is asking a question here's a horticultural question you'll love this um so perhaps this is one for perhaps this is one for Wilma um so um Joan says, thank you for sharing all the images of those colourful, hot weather loving plants. <laughs> Here in Scotland, we do our best to grow non-native plants. And do you grow any tricky non-native plants? Yes, we do. We do. Um, some people have tried to grow like the bird of paradise plant and have been successfully doing so. And um, there are people who have wonderful greenhouses and um, gardens and they they really into plants so the when you come you will see you will be able to visit them and see for yourselves roses however people some people have had some measure of success with roses but um roses are very difficult to grow here i find okay. but some people some people have had as i said some success but not as glorious as you would find the roses in Europe, England, London. Okay. You grow roses in Scotland, I imagine, too. We do. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes we do. Yeah. I say the first time I went to England, to London, and I saw the roses, I was stunned. They were as big as some of them were as big as a saucer. <laughs> bigger, and I said, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful sight. Beautiful. Yes. That's right. I yes. was in, I was intrigued by your uh, what you refer to as um a flower show, your flower uh -huh. shows. Yes. And you showed a slide of you um selling plants, you know. Yes. Uh, so do you have people and um, is that a way of sharing horticulture in general um well, through, throughout your community? Yes. rather than just plants because I think of pl a flower show as somewhere where there's lots of flower arrangements you know it's yes. all cut yes. flowers and we flower have, arrangements we but have this is wider yeah. yes we do have a lot of attractions we have demonstrations we have um displays we have um um, um activities for children sure. we have um members selling plants as well as non-members yes. so there's a wide range of activities for everyone but we try to concentrate on the floral aspect of it oh, having lots of plants and yeah stuff like that well they certainly look beautiful and in flower so that's, yes. lovely. <laughs> that's lovely a question now um another question from fiona do you think 
therapeutic gardening is widely accepted in Trinidad and Tobago by the general population and among health professionals. Sandra, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if we would call it therapeutic gardening, but I think having a relationship, the general public would, would more, I think would, would consider having a, rela a relationship with nature as very important. And as we know, we would call that therapeutic gardening, but spending time outdoors, hiking, spending time connecting with nature, those are certain, certainly activities that the general population engages in on a regular basis. It's very much a part of our landscape. Um, in terms of therapeutic gardening uh, in a more structured way, I think uh, what, we, what we've done here at HSU is actually maybe very unique along those lines. And hopefully we can chart a way forward um, by providing assistance to others in terms of how it was done and the benefits of having um, a therapeutic garden and horticultural therapy. So that's certainly part of our vision moving sure. forward and part of the next steps forward. Next steps, yeah. So um, this is a, another question possibly relating to next steps. Um, Julia is asking students with disabilities, how can they benefit? Um, is there a disability liaison office yes. involved with your yes, garden? Yes. yes, yes, there is. And prior to um, the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we had connected with the Office of Student Disabilities to figure out how can we enhance and expand some of the garden features to make it more accessible for students with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely, again, the next steps forward. And now students have returned to campus as of September of 22. It is now something we can move forward with in terms of developing and identifying stakeholders that can help us make that happen. So yeah. yes. Yes, that's in the pipeline. That's yes. interesting. I wondered if I could ask a question about how you um, assessed what your students needed, what they wanted from a garden. Did they, did they know they wanted a garden? How did you find out about that? They described it as a space where they can, where they can relax and mm -hmm. where they can feel free. <laughs> okay. There, was, they wanted an open space that they felt uh -huh. they could relax. And we then embellished on that. Okay, okay. But we felt it, it would fit in nicely with the whole focus on health and wellness uh -huh. as part of the new program that we started at HSU. Sure. And did you do a sort of a survey or how did you yes. actually do that? Yes, we did. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah. Um, once we had formalized exactly the type of garden, we then wanted feedback from students in terms of some of the sensory elements that they perceived as part of a sensory garden, as part of a healing garden. So we very much wanted to see if there were some preconceptions of what that garden would be like. Sure. So yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. It's really interesting to find out how you how you do these kind of things. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Danielle is asking, where are the seeds and plants from? And um, do the students bring some? Do they supply them or how does how does it work? Actually, yes, we've had a few student donations, but a lot of the plants, if not all of the plants, have been donations from the private uh, stakeholders, as well as the majority from the Eastern Horticultural Club membership. Yeah. Yes, because they're all plant mad, of course. I yes. love them. <laughs> And they're always you're checking so up right. on us. They're, all, they're so always right. walking by. <laughs> yes, you're sitting right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, glad to see it's the same the world over. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's lovely. Has anyone else got a question that they would like to voice? Um, please um, use your reactions button to put your hand up and uh, un 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 unmute and ask your question. Sally's put one in the chat. Um, Jenny. Oh, thank you. I'm missing that. Okay. So I've got one from Emma. Um, Emma's asking, um, she wondered what the views of the staff have been. Well, the views of the staff, what are their views of uh, view of the garden space? 
So. Let's put it this way. The garden space is, is, has been utilized by staff on a daily basis, on a regular basis. Anytime they want to seek refuge from all that's going on within the clinic, they can just step outside into the healing garden. And that's really, it has been a tremendous benefit for staff members. Um, they've also been very involved in the development of the healing garden. They had ideas about plants that they would like to see in the garden. Um, the pond feature was something that staff insisted on this time around. Our first water feature did not include a pond. Okay. Okay. It had it had a, a ripple effect, but using the Angostura barrels, it was a much smaller water feature. Sure. The, the 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 genesis for this much larger pond feature was all staff initiated. Uh -huh. okay. 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 They wanted that element to be a more focal part of the healing garden. Regard. Lovely. Sounds like they're, they're enjoying it. Um, yes, very much so. <laughs> lovely. Um, so uh, Julia is asking, does UWI offer a course in horticultural therapy? Not in horticultural therapy, in environmental landscaping. And okay. that's why, right. So we've worked with that particular department as well to introduce um, lecturers to the, to, the, to the healing garden space because many of the lecturers were unaware that we had a <laughs> healing garden at HSU. So they've invited, on, on a few occasions, they've invited their students to visit mm -hmm. the healing garden sure. and they would have a lecture there and we would orient them to just the elements of the garden. So that's why we felt it was important to work with food and uh, food production sure. and make horticultural therapy an element as part of the curriculum. So, mm. so we're working towards that. Again, next steps. <laughs> next steps, <laughs> terrific. <laughs> Um, so Ashley has a question about um, horticultural therapy. She's asking, um, is it a well-paid profession um, in Trinidad and Tobago? And how about horticulture in general? What's the sort of, how is it valued? Mrs. Wilma, how would you, how would you, how would you respond to horticulture in general? And how yes. I think you I, have landscapers, but go ahead. Yes, I think horticulture in general is a growing industry. They have, everybody seems to want to get into it. So they, it must mean that there is um, a benefit besides the he, the therapeutic benefit. It also means there's a monetary benefit to it. To it. So we have quite a few large um, landscape um, structures. Well, I should say structures. Um, people who are into gardening and selling plants and stuff like that. Um, we have a lot of people who are doing it from their homes. And I would say horticulture is on the rise in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Thank you, that's lovely. And uh, thank you both. Thank you to Sandra for your answers from, and that's from Julia and thank you very much. Thank you. If there are no further questions, I don't think I've missed any, have I? Please shout out if I have. Um, I will hand you back to Joan. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Um, if anyone does have any questions that you don't want to ask here, please email them into a uh, trellis and we will forward them on to Sandra and Wilma for you. But I, I'm going to just pick up, Sally does have a question. I think it's a good question to wind up the session with. If you had a wish list for the garden, pick one thing that you would like to include in it to improve the benefit. Oh, interesting question. <coughs> Sorry. If I had a wish list, I would have an extensive wish list for the garden. I, we do have an extensive wish list for the garden. I think we're looking at how we can expand the garden elements and whether it's by creating access for students with disabilities and really to find a way that the benefits of the garden can be enjoyed by all members of the campus community and the wider community. Okay, that's a lovely thing to ask for. 
for everybody to benefit from. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for your comments and questions. Um, thank you, Jenny. But thank you, um, Dr. Celestine and Mrs. Charles. Thank You're you so welcome. much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So interesting. If everybody would like to share.